Across the UK, on DAB Digital Radio, on the Free Times Radio app, and on your smart speaker, this is Gloria De Piero on Times Radio. Welcome back. This is the part of the show where we speak to the people whose lives are changed by the policies, news and debates that we report on every day. Bristol Council is considering a proposal to ban strip clubs. The licensing committee is now consulting on this. Bristol has two lap dancing clubs, Urban Tiger and Central Chambers. Jade, not her real name, worked for a few months in a strip club in a different city a few years ago. She now works with survivors of the sex industry. Jade, good morning. Good morning. Can you tell us about your experience of strip clubs, please? So my experience of strip clubs is that they kind of lure women um, to work in the industry on the promise of, you know, theoretically huge payouts and uh, the freedom to control your own hours. But um, in the reality, that's that's really not the truth for many women who end up in this industry. Tell, tell us what you mean by that. So you're lured by these great payouts. What What happens in practice? So in practice, clubs have two basic streams of income. You know, they have the bar and then they have their dancers. And in it's in the club's financial interest to create an environment in which the women compete against each other because customer loyalty to dancers equals return patrons and, you know, paying for more expensive um, mm. dances. But creating this environment takes many forms. It can take the form of turning a blind eye to rule breaking. So rules about touching, which actually keep these establishments legally permissible and overstaffing and this leads women having to offer ever more um, in order to secure the dances and theoretically achieve these high payouts that are such a lure to women desperate for income. Mm. Why, why did you uh, become a dancer? So I actually um, have a history in commercial sexual exploitation anyway but I managed to exit that um, and then a few years later I got into a position where my income was not covering my outgoings and I you know fell for exactly the same thing um that there was going to be uh, flexibility in my hours I'd have the freedom to work when I wanted and that you know there was a chance to earn all this money uh, but you know the reality was that in even in the smaller clubs that I worked in uh, it wasn't uncommon for for women to go home having earned zero pounds after a seven hour shift how um, but, well it's just because of the nature of this this competition um you know, it, it really does lead you to question your own value because um, you get to a point where you're thinking, you know, how are these how are some of these dancers earning so much money? And some of us really aren't. So you obviously internalize it and start to think, you know, maybe mm -hmm. I should be rule breaking a little bit, allowing customers to touch me. Maybe I need plastic surgery because I'm just not attractive enough. But women do turn it on themselves thinking about how to increase their own sales value, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm. Do you think they should be banned? Do you think Bristol Council are, are proposing to do the right thing? Yeah, I do. I do think that they should be banned because the conversation really does centre around, um, you know, the women who do do well. And I'm not going to deny that they exist because they absolutely do. Some women do really well and, you know, find the arrangement works for them. That's great. But for the women that it, it doesn't work out for, you know, a lot of us are scared to speak out because firstly, it means admitting that you worked in the sex industry. And secondly, the backlash from um, being appeared to contravene a woman's right to choose is so enormous that, you know, a lot of the conversation is just not being heard because the fear of retaliation is too great. So how do you ban these clubs carefully in a way that women's income doesn't suddenly disappear? Is there a route to doing this? Support services... Uh, are, you know, are vital across the sex industry to get women out. Of course they are. And this always leads into wider conversations about um, the economy and the job market and childcare, because obviously it's the majority of, of women in strip clubs, uh, people in strip clubs are women. So this does lead into wider conversations and I can't pretend that I hold all the answers, but, you know, they can't just be a blanket ban with no support. If the council are going to do it, they, they must work with the women who work there and come to some sort of conclusion on how to proceed. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And is there a danger, or if they are banned, of this trade, this industry going underground and, and in, endangering women further? I don't, I don't actually believe that you can make the sex industry safe, and I think that that is across the board... Um, 
obviously it being underground is a worry, but I feel like if if these establishments are blanket criminalized, it actually makes the job of, of the authorities a lot easier because if they're approaching a strip club, you know, they're not having to get through layers of secrecy in order to find out what laws they're contravening. They're just illegal and they can just approach it in a more simplistic manner. Tell me about the work you do now. So the work I do now, um, I am a specialist consultant for the survivors uh, organization Serenity and Serpent, where I offer um, structural solutions um, to authorities dealing with the sex industry and the people who work in it. And I also deliver a survivor's mental health recovery course for the charity You My Sister. And if anyone is listening who would like help or advice, where should they go? So they can always contact me. Um, my website is serenityserpent.com. Or they can always contact you, my sister, on Twitter at you, my sister, and there will always be myself and others to assist them further from there. It's been a big national debate about men's violence against women. Um, I mean, there always is, but it's been particularly loud in recent weeks, of course, due to Sarah Everard. Do you see men's violence against women on a spectrum? Do you think that that men? because they're able to go to strip clubs, they view women in a particular way. Does that breed dangerous attitudes in men towards women, in your view? I mean, in my view, yes, it does. But I think that there is plenty of statistics to show that's the case. I mean, it's not directly um, the same, but, you know, pornography, the amount of cases where there's been violence against women that that's been cited in is absolutely enormous. The idea that women can be purchased as a form of sexual entertainment um, for men. The suggestion that that doesn't do anything to the way that they, they view women, uh, to me, just seems, it seems ridiculous, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just wanted to, uh, to just mention um, a text message that has, has come in while we've been chatting from somebody who hasn't left her name but said, I was trafficked into prostitution and lap dancing was a large part of the grooming process and entry, the level of coercion and control. Is that something that you recognise? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, lap dancing um, is, is often a stop along the way in a, a long journey of, of sexual exploitation. As I said, I was trafficked into prostitution as a teenager um, and I actually ended up in stripping... Uh, after that happened, but it's not uncommon to find women in the industry with stories like this who are prostituting themselves outside of stripping as well. You know, there's multiple um, threads to this conversation mm. and, and you know, experiences of abuse and exploitation. I've learned a lot from listening to you and your experiences, Jade. I'm very grateful for your time. We'll let you go now, but thank you very much for coming on Times Radio. No, thank you for having me on. Thank you.